Hey, Rez family, Pastor Tony here. Listen, we are deep in the middle of the Joseph series, having an amazing time. What an experience. So much that we can really connect with on the on the life and the story of Joseph. But just real quick, man. Hey, if you're from the North Providence area, I'm here at Stel uh, Stella Suites right here on Smith Street right here in North Providence. My buddy owns this spot. They got locally brewed coffee, amazing coffee, and some great sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches, as well as some, it's called Stella Sweets, as well as some amazing sweets. Uh, Res family, I trust that you enjoyed today's sermon. God bless you. I'll see you around. So this is what we want to do. So like we're an equipping church. So I'm thinking intergenerationally, I'm thinking forward motion how do we get Nevea, who's 15 as comfortable as possible behind this table this is one way she's going to come and read genesis 39 <laughs> i feel really short over here That's Hold on. <laughs> wait no <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, whoever said that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be reading Genesis chapter 39. If you guys want to follow along, I highly suggest that you do so you don't make me nervous. <laughs> okay. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of, the Egyptian, of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted, him, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time that he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food that he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. <laughs> and after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and came and said, came, come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day, he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants were inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make a sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. The Hebrew slave you brought to us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, he, um, his wife told him, saying, this is how your slave treated me? He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Woo. Thank you, Nevea. We all have a, we all can really connect with 
Joseph kind of relate to him, really, right? What, what, a lot of the things that happened to him, we keep talking about betrayal, rejection, dark pits, and everything like that. And we can all really relate to what happened to him up to this point. But can we relate to how he responds to what happened to him? That's key right there. And that's the true perspective. We see what happens to him, but let's not, pay, let's not forget to see how he responds to what happens to him. And the interesting thing about Potiphar, Joseph was taken to Potiphar's house, is Potiphar was, in, he was the chief executioner. He was in charge in deciding how you were going to die. Egypt had hundreds of ways to execute somebody. Very painful, very bloody. And Joseph went to live in the guy's house who was going to decide, if he acted up, how he would die. And the one aspect of this story, I was thinking about this in the last week, that everything that happens to Joseph, I, I want to point out that each phase of Joseph's life, he was unaware of what was coming up next. And I said, me too. We're all like, that's me too. Everything that has happened in my life, I am unaware of what's coming up next. But I want to point something out that you are already are what you are about to become. In seed form. Stop saying, I can't wait till, but you're already there. You're just there in seed form. I mean, you, I mean if, you're, you, if you had the dream, the ball's in motion. It doesn't matter if you're in the pit. doesn't matter if you're in prison. And the key thing with Joseph is a little later on, we're going we're gonna to break up chapter 39 because there's so much good stuff in there. We're going to break it up. Next week, we're going to talk about how he lost, he lost another cloak. He has problems with losing jackets. <laughs> Two coats. I'm like, Joseph, man, hold on to your coats, man. The first coat represented loyalty. The first, second coat represented authority. Dude, come on, get a handle here. But that's next week. I don't want to kind of give you too much. See, this is how it works now. When, when God plans something in you, you are already in motion. And the devil's not, the devil's not going to try to attack a huge oak tree. He's going to try to steal the seed. What did Nebuchadnezzar, when he tried to go after Jesus, he says, you know, I'm not sure how this king, let's just kill every boy under two. How about when they went after Moses? Kill every, anytime God has, has an assignment on your life, anytime, let me tell you, the plan is greater than the plot. The devil has a plot, the dev, God has a plan, and the plan is always greater than the plot. The God has an assignment on your life. Stop waiting for it to, oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. It's already in motion. The seed is planted. Now here, it all began with a promise. It began with a dream, and then everything fell apart. <laughs> Like, it's like every time I feel like God is going to do something great in my life, and I know this is just me. It's like now I'm like, okay, now I'm just going to get hit by a truck now. The devil's going to try to take me out. And, and the, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world here. And I love chapter 39 that we're going to really focus on this part. Chapter 39 has profuse mentions of God's favor. God's blessed. God was with Joseph. Joseph found favor with God. Joseph found favor with man. And then in verse, it starts in verse 2. It says, the Lord was with Joseph that he, pros that he prospered Joseph as he lived in the house of his, of his Egyptian master. Verse 3 and 4. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, Potiphar, a pagan idolater, saw that Jehovah God was with Joseph. And the Lord gave him success in everything that Joseph did. We're going to hit that. We're going to talk about what it looks like to walk and to live in the favor of the Lord. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. This is important because if you were set, sold as a servant into Egypt, you didn't go to live in a house like this. You went into the fields. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted everything to his care. So what happened here was Joseph moved from being a servant to a steward. God was trying to push him through here. The promises of God have this way of pushing you, pushing you forward. The lies of the enemy want to push you off track. The promises of God want to push you forward. So this is the favor of the Lord. Now, verse 5, the Lord blessed Potiphar's household, we're going to get into this in a minute, because of Joseph. Because of Joseph. And I was thinking about this Joseph journey a couple of days ago. And I'm like, this is part four. I'm like, everything is dismal. Everything is 
dark. Everything is depressed, pit, prison, talking a lot about uh, darkness, a lot about betrayal and rejection. I said, maybe it's just a little too much. We need some air. (laughs) I was like, we need to come up for air and need some light. But then I thought, how do we know that God is good? We know God is good because we've been through some bad experiences. We know about the light of Christ because we've been through some dark experiences. We know the joy of the Lord is my strength because of depressive episodes. We know the peace of God because at one time we were filled with anxiety. And let it be so that when we go through, even through the bitter moments, those bitter moments are sweet because of the promises of God. So it's like we're saying, man, I'm in the dark too much, but how do you know, oh, the God is good? Good all the time, all the time, God is good. Because you've been through some incredibly difficult seasons. Some some of you, I know your stories. You having stories where you shouldn't even be here right now. Let's just be honest. How many of you could say, yeah, Pastor Tony, that's me. I I kind of should be dead right now. No exaggeration. Like, you are here by the grace of God. Joe Smith. Talking about Joe Smith, forget picking. Joe Smith, come on up. You got five minutes. Five minutes. I didn't feel like picking. Come on, Joe. Today. Do I need this mic? Because I can yes. talk pretty hard. No, 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 no. I need the mic? All right. So the scripture that spoke to me was Genesis 39, 20, and 21. Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph, and he shewed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So the Hebrew word for bound is asiya, meaning binding and loosing. It's originally a Jewish phrase, also mentioned in the New Testament. In usage, to bind and to loose simply means to forbid by an indisputable authority and to permit by an indisputable authority. Think about that for a minute. <clears throat> so in this piece, this piece of passage, prisons were places that, like today, were very dark, dirty, horrible conditions, and were used to house forced laborers, or like Joseph, people awaiting trial. Joseph was bearing all the weight of Potiphar's wife's accusations and had to use all the strength he had to endure this particular process. So we know there's many times that we go through processes. I can speak personally on many times up here where I was in situations and I'm just like, you know, God, where are you? Why is this going on? And then after you get to the other side of it, you realize that because he was there, there was part, there were times, I mean, I can speak because there's not a lot of kids here, I hope, right? <laughs> But there was things that I was doing. I was wrapped up in addiction, and my addiction was really bad. I would end up on the side of the road, OD, and pass out on the side of the road, and then come to. So even though I was in that saying, well, you know, God, where are you? I'm doing this. I realize now that there were a lot of kids that I was running with that didn't wake up from that call. So he wasn't lying when he said what he said. <laughs> so we sit back and we say, Lord, where are you? How could you leave me? Yeah. And this, this isn't part of the notes, but it's jumping out of me, so I'm going to share it for somebody. That poem or story footprints, you know, a lot of people, we walk, we're walking down the beach and we're, we're, we're talking with God and there's a difficult time of our life. And a lot of us don't understand that we look back and all the times, like I'm just saying, and you say there's one set of footprints. Now, if you don't know the end of the story, you're like, man, where did you get the most difficult times? Where did you go? Why did you, why did you leave? And you don't realize after you're on the other side of it, after you're out of the pit, like Pastor Anthony was saying, you realize that that was his footprints and he was carrying you. Yeah. 
So we never consider that when we're inside this situation that we think that we step out of God's plan when we're actually staying in God's plan. It's the God's perfect plan. Because we don't see it, we can't comprehend the things that he has for us because his ways are above our ways. And I mean, thank God for that. Because there's a lot of times we'd be going into a situation and if we knew what we had to endure to get to the other side, we'd just be like, no, I'm straight, dude, I'm good. I would. So that we find out that the Lord is with Joseph in the prison. And we all know that no matter what it looks like to us, he always has the bigger and better plan that we could ever fathom or imagine. And the fact that I'm here right now is just justification in truth that that is very true. We could even say that the Lord was there with Joseph to support him in every single trying time he had. Let us consider a time when we thought a situation was going to go one way and then God showed up and changed it. And changed it for the better and for our good. This also encourages us to trust him, increases our faith in times of doubt, and allows us to continually lead, allow him to lead us and trust him where he's leading us to. Amen. I believe that the Lord will always leave us signs and speak to us through words from our pastors and also in times of confusion through worship, other people, prophetic speakings, songs, situations. He will always get your attention when he needs to get it. Again, truth right here. <laughs> The Holy Spirit will direct us almost like omnidirectional leading that will lead us to stay focused and be aware of all the pitfalls and obstacles that are around us at all times. His promise, the path that he has chosen for us, the omnidirectional, if you allow it, will guide you to navigate through situations, around pitfalls, and over and under obstacles to get to the plan that was predicted, predestined, and chosen for each one of us individually. Joe, omnidirectional, he said. Love that. Originally, I was going to do the one Joseph's handsome and built. <laughs> Yeah, sit down. <laughs> so, Pastor Donovan, tell Joe what happened. When you went up, he picked the name? No, nope, it's God. It's God. No. See, let me tell you that We have a preaching school, right? And, and nine students graduate, so every week we pull a name out of a, a, a glass. And so the students, Pastor Donovan is the instructor, the students are accusing Pastor Donovan and I are loading the dice. <laughs> Hop, last week, we had Pastor Mike pick a name, see? And then we had Jan. Come on. Let's stay on this stream. Verses 6 and then verse 20 of chapter 39 uh, uh, gives us continued insight. Verse 6 says, Potiphar left everything in Joseph's care, and Joseph was in charge. Verse 20 says, By while Joseph was in prison, the Lord was with him. So we hear a lot of God was with Joseph. God was with Joseph. God was it with me. Now, I know sometimes in our conversations with people, it's like, I'm so overwhelmed. I just know God's with me. And sometimes we make that statement almost like dismissive, like just God is with me. I'm, this is not a, God is omnipresent. This is not omnipresence. This is the visible, tangible, powerful, leading, guiding presence of the Holy Spirit that is glorifying the purposes of heaven. God is everywhere. God is here. God is there. God, God is in the bar. God is in the club. God is everywhere, okay? My question to you is, God, is God leading you? Is God guiding you? Because the fact that Joseph is, uh, that God is with Joseph is celebrating the purposes of, of heaven here on this earth. This is the favor of God, Pastor Donovan. The favor of the Lord is when heaven and invest everything you've been given a promise and heaven is investing everything in you now God doesn't bet but he's like putting all the chips on you I wouldn't put all the chips on there I'm like Joe I mean God said come on all the chips on Joe 
knowing that the cross of Jesus Christ would impact your heart and yet you would receive his mercy and his grace. So when it says that God is with Joseph, God is everywhere. We're talking about is the leading, guiding power, the anointing of heaven on your life. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Are you, is your life the platform of the purposes of heaven? So all you have to have is a promise. When you get the promise of God, you can walk through any season, any darkness, any pitfalls, and heaven is pushing you forward with the promises of God. If God promised you something, all of heaven is invested in you to make sure that you succeed. This is it right here. All of heaven is invested here. And this season is dark, but nothing counts. Some of you are in a very dark season. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just count and say, God, thank you for blessing me. Man, we don't, we're not, I'm not good at that. When I'm in the pit, I'm like, I'm rebuking devils and I'm casting out demons. And, and, and I'm good at casting out demons and devils. I have problems dealing with me. I tell you what, man, if I had a choice between dealing somebody who, who's a carnal Christian and somebody who's, who's demon-possessed, I'll deal with the demon all day. Sometimes, de- sometimes dealing with demons is easier than dealing with people. Hello, can I just be honest with you? I know, I'm upsetting some of you. I'm going in now. If I see an upset face, I'm going in. I don't... This is it. So, okay, so Joseph, you got a promise. Big deal. We want to check your character. Don't pray prayers of comfort. Pray prayers of character. If we spent more time praying for our character than our paying attention to our feelings, things would happen. Okay? And this is the whole element of favor. Favor is not for status. Favor is for function. Okay? So Joseph was rich. He had all these things going. He had all these things happen. But it wasn't for him to show off. Once again, showing off another coat. It was really that the function of heaven could be an earthly reality. That heavenly promises become earthly realities. Let your will be done on here on earth as it is in heaven. The fact that Joseph was rich was for one thing. So that the purposes of God will prevail. God's favor has this way now of shortening. So God's, what is God's favor? God's favor is not something you pray for. God's favor is something you experience when you live in, uh, the word is, starts with an O, ends with ins. Middle phrase is B. Anybody want to guess? You guys are sharp today. There are certain things that you pray for that are designed to be lived in. You're praying for something. If you're praying for something and being disobedient, there's nothing here that does it say Joseph said, oh, God, please be with me. I pray, oh, God, please be with me. And God's like, why are you insulting me? I'm everywhere and I'm living inside of you. God, give me your peace. I'm the prince of peace. I live inside of you. So there's nothing here that Joseph said, please be with me. There's nothing here that said, Joseph said, God, I need your favor. God, Joseph was just consistently doing the right. Let your next big breakthrough be consistency. Let your next breakthrough be, let me see who I should talk to. You get to church on time. You can look at a lot of people. God is glorified. Favor enables and empowers and ensures that our short-term sightedness doesn't disqualify God's long-term plan. Sometimes in my short-term, I, sometimes I get into this funk and I have this short-term sightedness and it causes me to make permanent long-term plans. And I start making plans that affect the long-term based on my short-term panic. Oh, Pastor, I got to make this decision right now. I got to call him. All right, first of all, breathe. Fast for about 10 years and then make the decision. Check this out. The decisions that you feel the urgency to make, you really don't have to make them right now. You ever go through a sales thing? We need a decision now. I'm like, this ain't for me then. This thing for me. This deal can this deal be next week? No, the deal is for now. It ain't for me then. Be careful. With, I'm telling. I'm talking to somebody. Be careful. Some of you want to buy a car. Watch those guys, man. Not all of them. Some of them are good. 
And this is if favor now, favor has this element of favor pushes you. Some, we walk by faith, not by sight. So when God has assigned a promise on my life, there's a promise on my life. I had a dream. God gave me a word. And, and favor has this way of pushing me into the place where God is glorified. My character is formed. I'm becoming more like Jesus, and I get to experience the promises of God. This is it. And even in those times now, this is kind of cool here because I love this. It says even in those times that Potiphar notices something very unique about Joseph. Joseph was a servant. He cleaned the house. That's all he did. But, but Potiphar, who's a ruthless, a, a, a ruthless pagan idolater in Egypt, Potiphar knows, notices Joseph's demeanor. He notices Joseph's attitude. And in the original Hebrew, it says that he noticed that his activities were supernatural. But Joseph was just cleaning. Joseph wasn't performing miracles. Joseph wasn't in leadership. Joseph wasn't praying for people. Joseph wasn't healing the sick. Joseph was cleaning. But Potiphar noticed that Joseph's activities were supernatural. Some of y'all on the job. Pastor I hate my job. I hate my boss. I hate the people that I work with. I hate, I hate everything I do. I hate everybody. I hate the world. I hate, 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 hate. Pastor, pray a blessing over me. <laughs> now, the thing is that this is favor. Favor is you feel stuck. You feel like nothing's working out. But you're going to do what you're, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Stay put. Do the right thing. And let someone else, and you know, that, that's the reason why you're not getting a raise. Oh, snap. That was for somebody here today. <laughs> you want a raise? You want a promotion? I'm not being recognized. I'm not being, I want my name. I want my name. I want, I want a plaque. I want one of those clear glass things that have my name on it, you know. I want the favor of God, but your attitude stinks. So, so it's like Joseph, Potiphar, Potiphar did see, Joseph wasn't leading anybody. He was leading himself. See, before David, had a, before David killed Goliath and slew that giant, he had to sly, he had slay the giant within. And this is what we're talking about here. You want the promise, but you got to go through the process here now. Okay, and, and the, problem that, the problem that Joseph was, was having here and the problem that w- what was happening is Potiphar noticed something about Joseph. He was cleaning supernaturally. The Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it as unto the Lord. Why? You don't work for man. You work for God. So in all that complaining, you failed to realize, first of all, that it wasn't your resume that got you the job. It was the Holy Spirit that got you the job. So maybe God put you there. Oh, Pastor Tony, pray that God gets me out of here because it's a very dark place. I ain't going to pray that. I'm going to pray that God keeps you there because you're the only light. About 15 years ago, I had a lady come to me who was a makeup artist, and, and, and she, she came to me one day, and she says, Pastor Tony, I, I need to get out of where I'm working. And she explains to me what's happening. She said, it's a very dark place, very dark things happen in the place. I'm like, where do you work? She says, well, I work at some of the clubs where the dancers are, okay? I'm like, oh, okay. So, so I, I said, so you do? She says, well, I do the, makeups of, the makeup of all the dancers. I'm like, okay, that's a dark place, right? And I said, how long does it take you to do the makeup of each lady? She goes, 20 to 30 minutes. And are you talking to them? Oh, yeah, I'm talking to them about Jesus. I'm like, I'm not going to pray that God gets you out of that job. I'm going to pray that people start getting saved in those clubs. Come on, you're complaining. Listen, if you want to know the art of the favor of the Lord, do what God has called you to do during the dark seasons. When you were on the mountaintop, when you had the revelation of Jesus and you had that powerful breakthrough and you made these promises and, and words that you use, make sure that you continue to do those things when you're in the valley. When you were committed, when you had a revival hit your life, Make sure you continue to be the same person 
when you're in the dark. Let me tell you, the anointing and the revelation of who Christ is in your life grows when you're in darkness. I don't like that. I don't like it. Because I know when I'm going through dark seasons, I'm like, all right, let me put my seatbelt on, making sure the airbags work, put my crash helmet on here, um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going with Jesus all the way. But yet you might find yourself in this unfair situation at work or at school, and you begin to complain and have a bad attitude, and, 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 you, and people around you are not receiving the gospel because you're so upset. The depths of Joseph's attitude determined his altitude. He went from servant to steward now because Potiphar is giving him stuff. When you're in favor with God, you'll be in favor with man. Now, so many of us want favor with man, but we don't even have favor with God. Stop seeking to be liked by other people. Stop seeking for the attention of your boss. Be a good steward and say, God, thank you for this $14 an hour. And then God moves you on for $14 an hour. And again, you didn't get your raise because of what the, uh, uh, you didn't get your raise. Joseph didn't get notoriety because of what he did. It's how he did it. It's not what you do, but it's how you do it. Can you do what you do without complaining? Let me ask that question again. (laughs) It's meant to be a rhetorical question, but if you want to say yes, that's fine. Like, can you do what you do without complaining? It's just, yeah, it's just like, even, even in your head, in your head is also complaining. If you complain in your head, it's complaining, right? Am I right? Because it begins to really affect everyone around you, okay? Now, what if, what if there are people at your job that need your ministry, and your ministry is being canceled out because you don't know how to conquer your own giants? So Potiphar notices something. I love this in the original language. He notices something supernatural about Joseph. And I want to tell you, I want to encourage you. If you're in that place... Stay right there. Especially for those who are saying, I'm looking for a new job. I need to get out. I need to get out where I'm at. Why? You can make your list of reasons. What if you take a step back and say, God, do you still want me here? Help me to find favor with the frustrating part of pursuing favor with man without finding favor with God is because you can get favor with men and not have favor with God. But once you pursue favor with God and live in the favor of God, God's giving you a promise. Live like your promise. Live like your answered prayer. Why are you waiting for the prayer to be answered? Live like that. That's promise. That's the favor of the Lord on your life. If God puts something in your heart, you are already already what you are about to become in seed form. So your prayers should not be filled with, Lord, help me, make me cozy and comfortable. Your prayers should be filled with, Lord, work on my character. I know God gave you a promise, but you got to be tested. His master saw something. The Bible says his master saw that Jehovah was with him. It was the anointing and the blood. You know what? Every time you come here, you're, you're always so filled with joy. Every time you, every, I love when you come, you, when you come and, and you get coffee here, you're always, you're always happy. Why are you always so filled with joy? People know you, people know your name, not because how, it's not what you order, it's how you order it. That you take a second and go, how are you doing? And then be led by the spirit. If someone says, I'm having a terrible day, how are you doing today? It's a job. Take 30 seconds. Can you take 30 seconds out of your day for somebody who's miserable, who doesn't have Jesus, for you to give them an opportunity to share Jesus with them? Can you do that? Because our world, I don't know if you noticed, but it's going down the tubes. (laughs) But Jesus said, when you see the world going down the tubes, look up for your redemption, Jorath Nye. His master saw, he said, man, there's something different about you and Joseph's ability and his supernatural ability caused Joseph caused Potiphar to say everything I'm going to do you can do better and God blessed 
Potiphar's household because of Joseph. Imagine. Imagine that. Navigant Credit Union, Abigail. Imagine God blesses, because God blessed Potiphar because Joseph was there. So God says, I'm going to bless Joseph because Joseph's my son. He's happened to be a Navigant Credit Union, so i got to bless Navigant Credit Union, not because of Navigant Credit Union, because Joseph is there. So where do you work, Deja? Bradley Hospital. So imagine all of a sudden Bradley Hospital is like cha-ching, cha-ching, blessed. There's healing taking place there. There's restoration taking place there. There's wholeness. Families are coming together. Not because of Mr. Bradley. Is there a Mr. Bradley? But because Deja works there. Because you work there. You didn't say, Lord, please help me be with me. But because you're living a life of favor, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And that favor follows me. And if you're around me, you just may get smacked upside the head with the blessings of God. What does Deuteronomy chapter 28 say? If you obey me, my blessings will overtake you. Over, and I love it because it's a very military term. Like, over, I want to be overwhelmed with how good God is. I want to be overwhelmed by the shalom of God. I want to be overwhelmed by his healing power. That means I have to live like my, the promise has been fulfilled on my life. I have to live like that prayer in my life has been answered. Oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Let the next breakthrough be you obeying Jesus, no matter what. So as a result of Joseph receiving favor, the Bible says Potiphar's household was favored because of Joseph. You know, every time I talk about blessing and favor, so I always have somebody say, well, I just feel uncomfortable. I don't want to just pursue the blessings of God. I says, then I will. He's my daddy, and he's got gifts to me, and I got no shame running after the gifts. I mean, I, ran after, I go after what's in his hand, but I go after his face, because when I see a revelation of his face, I receive what's in his hand. Some of you are going after what's in his hand. You get what's in his hand, but you miss the revelation of his face. That's my Jesus. He's my father. You see, when I live in the favor of the Lord, living in the favor of the Lord means everything's a blessing. Wow, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God, thank you for the thank you. Hallelujah. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise. And then when the big things happen, you recognize it. Why? Because you recognize the little things. You recognize the little things. And Joseph recognized that God was with him in the, per- in the pit, at Potiphar's house, and in the prison. And as a result, God says, I can trust a guy like this. Because if God can trust your attitude when things are dark, God can trust your attitude when things were light. So, stop complaining. You ever tell somebody, stop complaining? I'm not complaining. You're my covering, and I just need to share this with you. Why are you still complaining? How do you know when something's complaining? When you've built equity in the darkness, you're there. You just, you're just there. You know, if you say, yep, Yea, though I walk, I'm walking through the valley. Complaining is I'm stuck here in the valley. But the Bible says I'm walking through, which through means in the original Hebrew means through. (laughs) I'm walking through. So God says, I got to bless this house because Joseph's there. Joseph's my boy. So before Joseph was entrusted with what God had for him, Joseph was entrusted with what Potiphar had for him. This is all part. Let me tell you, God doesn't waste a crisis. God wastes nothing here. And I love the fact that in 39, God is with Joseph. God was with Joseph. Potiphar gave Joseph favor. I have to bless this house. God's help. God being with you. Favor. God, here's the deal. This is what Psalm 46 1 said. This is a perfect way to wrap it up. He is a very present help in time of trouble. Now, we could take two words out of there and say, He is my help in time of trouble, which that is true. But why do we have to add two words, very present? So it's almost like hyperbole, very exaggerated. He never leaves you, He never forsakes you. 
right? So when we say very present, present for us is right now. Present for the Lord is up there. So God is very present. He's already ahead with a solution for problems that you have not yet experienced. Come on, you should have said amen more on this side. Very present means I'm here. I'm still dealing with the issues I got here. He's very present. God is already there saying, I've already left a, I've already left a trail of supernatural revelation. I'm already at the next step here with solutions for problems that you have not yet experienced. And so when I get there, I'm panicking. And God's like, I've been there, done that. I'm already ahead. I'm very present. Wherever you are. And the beginning of this is, he's my refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. So you're in this place now where you still have this dream. You still have this promise. And I want to tell you, in the middle of the darkness, I want to tell you this. Stay put. Forty years, Mary? Waiting 40 years for a promise. That was her testimony. So if a thousand years is like a day, how many is 40 years? Like three and a half seconds. Because I just gave you the promise three and a half seconds ago, Mary. I know that's not very encouraging, but that's that's the Bible. Blame the Bible. Like why? (laughs) She goes, it is in there. (laughs) I don't make this stuff up. This is like, this is all in here. Stay put. Joseph, continue what you're doing. But God, what if Joseph came to you for counseling and says, you know, God gave me a promise and this has been my life. I was thrown in a pit and I was sold to the Ishmaelites who's a family generational curse that my father Abraham started when he he laid down with with Hagar and had Ishmael and the Ishmaelites. And and now I'm in Potiphar's house and, and now I'm cleaning and I don't know what to do. What would you say to him? You keep doing that with all your heart with all your mind, and with all your soul, man noticed. Don't let it be where man notices a God moment in your life before you do. Let it not be so where God, where man, Potiphar, notices the anointing on your life before you realize that there's a purpose still infused in you. Live. This is why I say, James, man, you live, you put your head up high. I teach my kids, you know what, have a pretend confidence. You put your head up high. There's some people that are going to think you have an ego. And you know what, that's okay for the haters. The haters will be your motivators, right? But you know what, when you know who you are and whose you are, you stand with your head up high and you say, God is for me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? No tongue that rises up against me will prosper. No weapon formed against me, will prosper. Paul Paul said, if I'm in my right mind, it's because of you. If I'm out of my mind, it's because of Jesus. I'm crazy enough to believe, Pastor Mike, that this stuff is true. I have eternal life, but I tell you what, I'm going to enjoy my stay here on earth as long. I'm going to have the abundant life that Jesus comes to. He comes to give me life and to give me life more abundantly. So if you're in that place right now, you're good. And if that's all, yeah, yeah, God give me a promise, but look at me, I'm cleaning. I, I'm not happy with my job. I don't like how my boss treats me. I, I am, I got, help me, Pastor Tony. I heard you help people with their resume. Help me out. I'm like, no. <laughs> Haley, you didn't ask me that. <laughs> but, so, you know, first of all, 80% of people don't like their job. 80% of people will say, How's, he, how's work? It's a job. That means it pays the bills. So everyone here is 20% where it's like, God is my provider. My paycheck does not pay the bills. It's Jehovah Jireh that pays the bills. And it was, as a result, you do everything, Deja at Bradley Hospital, filling out the paperwork. Yay! You fill out that paperwork in supernatural ways. Well, what does that mean? You get it done quicker. (laughs) It's more accurate. But there's heart in it. You're doing it not for Mr. Bradley. You're doing it 
for the families that God has called you to touch and restore. It's like, man. Now, when you do it as unto the Lord, man, I want to say, when I do something to the, unto the Lord, there's a reward of God and then there's a reward of man. And if there's no reward of man, you got the reward of God. But let it be so where in the house here today, the favor of God will even impact putting gas in your car. I got gas, Elder Shirley, for 409. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Everything's a miracle, man. Somebody drove this. I was about to drive the Seekonk and grab gas for 399. Yeah, and waste gas. <laughs> See, it's like, thank God for everything. Take nothing for granted. Be a good steward. If you're in a place that, if you're in a place that man put you at as a result of decisions that you didn't make and it's not your fault and you feel like unfair, do it as unto the Lord. You clean that house. You fill out that paperwork. You do those exchanges. Where else do you work? Where do you work? Oh, yeah, the state of Rhode Island. Woo! Let's give Jan a hand. I was looking for an example. We love you, state of Rhode Island. We don't even need to go further on that, you know what I'm saying? Just like, man, you know what favor is? Favor when, is when God outperforms your prayers and you can ask above and beyond what you ask or think and guess what God God says let me show off a little bit and then he answers prayers you never prayed so in the meantime we're like okay well it's time it's this time of my life where it's time to make a move Lord Jesus you talk to your handsome husband there and 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 you're praying and God says Calm down. Just make it too much movement. Too much movement. Just go and do what God, just go and do what you're supposed to do. How about that? You've been hired to do this. Just do your job. But then it's like, boy, there's no passion in that. Oh, well, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, there's a whole lot of passion. Because now you're not doing it for the state of Rhode Island. Right? You work for who? Never mind. <laughs> you're doing it as unto the Lord. And when you do it as unto the Lord, people around you, they say there's something supernatural about you. And those supernatural moments, Jalon spoke the first service and he said, the first instance we see of, of Joseph experiencing favor was in his dark seasons. It's the first time. It's not when you're on the top of a mountain, you're like, you're enjoying the revelation of what you received while you were in the valley. So just stay put. Too much movement. Too much, too, much, too much action going on. You take care of what you can take care of, and then God will take care of what only he can take care of. And that's a supernatural. You just provide the platform so when he's ready to release a miracle, your life is a platform. Chronicle says he's, his eyes move to and fro, looking... To, for anyone that he can extend this favor to. So he's looking. He's looking. Let's do that song, Pastor Donovan, and your team. Where are you guys at? He's looking. He's looking. Prince of Peace. Shalom. He's got you exactly where you're at right now. Don't panic. Don't be afraid. Don't fear. The Lord your God is with you. Do not be discouraged or afraid. He's with you wherever you go. This is the anxiety-free zone right here. Anxiety-free zone. Come on, Pastor Donovan, let's sing this song.